Hey everybody, Stage Left Audio. We're going to be looking at ringing out a system, more primarily ringing out monitors, in other words, uh, trying to cut back or completely eliminate feedback. And the, the stuff that we're going to be doing here applies to monitors, but also can apply to ringing out a front of house. And hopefully you're not having to ring out front of house too much. Uh, if you do, you probably got a mic placement issue. So anyway, we're going to be using our vocal only uh, little board here, which is uh, more than adequate for what, we're, for what we're using it for. And we're going to be using channel 1, and over here we've got the auxiliary for monitors. That's that red knob there. You can see it's turned to the right. That is sending the signal out to the monitor bus, which is right here where the, come on, focus where the monitor send is. It's coming out to there and we are controlling it, the main monitor right here, through this monitor slider. Give you an idea of what we're doing. And to ring it out to help control the feedback, we're going to be using uh, this uh, DBX EQ. This is your standard uh, 31 band EQ. And for amplification, we're using the QSE 3402. And this little rack here is what we use for uh, testing. So, we're going to get started. Okay, for this exercise, we're going to be using uh, two different kind of microphones. We're using an Audix i5, it's on the left, and a Sennheiser EA35, which is on the right. And the one thing to take away from this is to understand, maybe not understand, but know that different microphones have different properties and not all microphones are going to feed back on all the same frequencies. So a different mic is going to probably feed back on a different frequency. So something to think about when we're going through this exercise. So we're going to be starting with the Sennheiser. Okay, in this exercise, we do have the luxury of turning down the monitor send here or if we need to we can adjust the overall master monitor send right here so we're ringing out the system we can adjust either one of these but in a live sound situation you don't want to be reaching automatically for either the monitor send for the channel or the master monitor send here because when feedback occurs what we want to do is to control the frequency that's causing the feedback. And it is sometimes out of habit just to grab the whole system and turn it down. To obviously, turn it down temporarily until we get under control, and then we turn it back up. But the problem is that the performers on stage, when you turn down the master, they do not hear anything that's going on on the stage. So it is a habit sometimes to do is just to turn it down. But the idea of ringing out the system is that you don't have to do this. You don't have to turn it down. Okay, so to start out with, our EQ is flat and we're going to leave it that way. And as we begin to turn up the gain of the system, we should be able to start hearing some feedback. Now I have the microphone positioned sort of in front of the speaker, just so we can force some feedback. So let's get started. and. Once again, we're using, actually we're starting out with the Sennheiser E835. So I'm going to try to zoom in here, maybe get a better better image, maybe of some of the frequencies we're going to adjust. Uh, we shouldn't need anything 20, 30, even 40 down, and we probably aren't going to need too much of the 20K. So let's just start it out with it right there, and let's see what a Sennheiser E835 produces. Okay, we've got our monitor sends up. I've got um, probably a little bit of a hot gain on the mic. I know you can't see it, but I'm just telling you what I'm setting here. We've got a hot gain on the mic. Now we're going to turn up the monitors. Test, one, two, test, test. Okay, there we go. All right, let's find that frequency. And maybe a little bit of testing. Okay, that low frequency was 250. Now I didn't take it down all the way. Now 
got a little bit of feedback coming through. All right. We didn't take it down all the way because we don't want to totally reduce that frequency from what the people hear, from what the performers hear. All we want to do is take it down enough to reduce the feedback. Now, I'm adjusting the master monitor gain on the board. I'm sliding it up just a little bit each time. And what I'm going to do is, once I feel comfortable that the frequencies are under control, I'm going to turn it up even more to try to get more gain out of the system before feedback. So we're going to put it back where we had it before. We should get that uh, higher frequency. There we go. See, so our 250 is okay. Well, 4K, but I'm not confident that was actually 4K. Test. One, two, two. All right. Down a little bit. One, two, one. No. One. Now, when we cut the frequencies, we're cutting actually a bell curve. Uh, if we take one frequency, we're cutting this wide bell curve. So even though, for example, we took down 250, we're actually taking down also 245, 240. Take that out a little bit more. I've got the microphone sort of sitting in front of me. Now, there does come a point where you can't take care of, you can't reduce completely all of the feedback. And if that ever occurs... If that ever occurs, test one. If that ever occurs that we cannot reduce all the feedback, then that's a sign that you have a mic placement issue. Either you've got a mic too close to a monitor, uh, meaning the, the front of the mic is, is pointing more at a monitor, or you've got a monitor position problem. Test one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, we'll take out 1K. All right. We're adding a little bit more gain. Test. One, two. Okay, we're almost at full unity here on the board. Test. One, two. Now, I would probably leave it at this point here and not get much louder on the board. As I said, normally I would not have this type of setup uh, with this mic sitting almost directly in front of the speaker. So what we've done here is on the Sennheiser, we've built a notch out, 250. Well, this is not a very narrow notch, but a wide notch. Uh, a 250, we've gone down 1K, and a 3.15. So this is our reduction for a Sennheiser E835. And we could probably clean it up a little bit more, maybe. Um, get rid of some of that overtone at 500 hertz. But then, you know, it does sound a little bit better. hope you can hear the difference. But uh, also, we're reducing a lot of frequencies here, which is going to be drawing away from what the performers hear on stage. And if a performer, if they say they can't hear you, uh, pardon me, not hear you, but if they say they can't hear themselves, and you've notched out a whole bunch of frequencies, the problem is, well, yeah, it is true. They can't hear themselves because you've cut a lot of the frequencies that are probably within the range of the instrument that they're playing. All right, let's try the, we're going to reset these and we're going to try an Audix i5. Okay, we've reset the frequencies on our EQ and we've got the Audix i5 positioned and we're going to be using the same gain setting on the board as we have for the Sennheiser. The auxiliary send that you saw on the board earlier uh, for the monitor send has not changed, it's going to be in the same position. And the only thing that's going to change is we're going to increase the overall monitor output level. Alrighty. Test one, two. Alright, we got a signal. Alright, let's give this a try. Test one, two. Test. Alright, now I can already tell right now the Audix i5 does a lot better job with. Uh, with proximity to speakers. Uh, the slider is up quite a few more dB, perhaps 15 more dB, more than the uh, Sennheiser mic. So this mic automatically is doing a lot better job uh, handling the frequencies around it. 
So we're going to add a little bit more. We're going to increase the monitor output a little bit more to get it to go into feedback. Okay, just like the Sennheiser, it's around 250 hertz. Okay, it's pretty quiet. We're going to be increasing some more. Okay, what we want to do is we want to try to hold it at that frequency, at that output level. Okay, come in 5K, somewhere around 5K. Just a little bit of overtone. So maybe just like the Sennheiser here, let's um, take it out to 500. Okay, so we're down, we got 250 down, a 500, so we've got a, almost an octave apart. Just add a little bit more game. And we're down to 1K. Now, right now, the board is, the output on the board is around Unity, which was um, a bit more than the Sennheiser mic. Now we can still get a little bit more feedback out of it. Uh, bring that down a little bit more. Okay, that's around 2K. Now, if it gets to this point where we have some good low bass test, one, two, one, there we go. There we go. Okay, now the board is set at unity for its output. So the, the mic position on this is no different from where the Sennheiser was, and the gain level on the board is no different. But I was easily, I could easily get more gain before feedback on this Audix mic than I did on the Sennheiser. But from when I mentioned before on the Sennheiser, if you're finding yourselves having to cut a lot of different frequencies, uh, you've got probably more of a, of a situation here, probably more of a physics problem with where the mic is positioned and or where the monitor positioning is. Uh, something like this, a lot of cut frequencies, uh, you know, performers may or may not say, hey, I, I can't hear myself, I can't hear anything. So really what we want to do is make sure that the mic placement is good and make sure you're using the correct microphone for the application. Okay, I've reset the EQ, everything to be flat, and what I thought I'd do was put in, it's an Audix mic, it's another Audix mic. Uh, let me see, what am I using? It's an Audix. ADX51. This is a condenser mic uh, that I use for overheads. And so I thought I'd use this uh, for yet another example of how, of how uh, different feedback frequencies occur with different microphones. So once again, the gain is set up the same. The monitor send is the same. So what I'm going to be controlling is the master monitor output. Okay, now right there this is a condenser mic. It is extremely sensitive, and I've just barely moved the master monitor slider up, and I'm already getting feedback. So let's see if we can ring it out. Test, 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 test. Okay, I managed around 1K and 2K. Add a little bit more. Test, 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 test. Oh, that's, I don't know if you can hear that. That's a, that may have been close to 12K. Test, test. So we got a low end here. Test, 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 test. Now I'm adding a little bit more output on the board each time. Test, test. Now, test, 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 test. Okay, that could have been around 500 hertz. Okay, man, a little bit more. Oh boy. Test. 
Okay, that was about 1.6. That's causing our... There we go. Let's put the 2 back up. We really need to be cautious of how much we're taking out each time because that will affect the overall monitor sound. Okay, we've got down 8K. I've probably only gone up maybe 10 dB on the board. So that, you know, so the mic positioning is the same as where it was with the uh, other Audix i5 and the Sennheiser. Test one. See, this is now obviously we're cutting a bunch of frequencies here. Yeah, we're cutting a bunch of frequency frequencies in trying to ring this mic out. And once again, as I said, if you're cutting a bunch of frequencies to control it, this is prob there's probably something wrong, you know, with the mic placement or the mic usage. So it's very important to make sure that you're using the correct mic for the correct application. And when reducing levels, you just want to reduce it a little bit at a time. 2 to 3 dB, maybe that could be too much but just reduce it enough to get rid of the feedback and then when you're satisfied with all your frequency settings at your volume level on the board increase more turn up the monitor output some more to generate more feedback this is how you get the best gain out of the board before feedback okay as I mentioned before early on if you're having to ring out front of house uh, on anything over here any of the frequencies if you're at front of house and you've got this low, not, not a super low, but if you've got this uh, annoying uh, overtone coming in, let's say you reach up and you cut down 125 hertz. When you adjust that down, you're actually adjusting the entire sound system, the entire front of house sound system. This is where you got to be really careful about just adjusting the EQ on front of house. That includes if the EQ is is inserted into the front of house as an insert or if it's an inserted into front of house as an inline EQ because any adjustments that you make here are changing the overall sound quality of what's coming out of the front of house basically what people hear if you find that you're having to make adjustments here on front of house you've got something more seriously wrong either with speaker placement or with microphone placement more than likely more than likely the problems exist where the microphones are too far forward on the stage uh, relevant to where the speakers are. It's always good to keep the speakers out front of the microphones at least by three to five feet. So when you're making adjustments here, make them very, very sparingly if you have to.